We're not getting any earlier, are we? If your round is proving too demanding, you should take the matter up with... Oopsie daisy, it's my fault entirely, dear. <laughs> Clubs is my middle name. Yeah, well, <laughs> keep away from me. No. Uh, no, I'm afraid none of the administrative staff are here at the minute. Is. Is here. None takes the singular form of the verb. I trust you don't mind my pointing that out. No, no, I'm, I'm actually very grateful. Um, the, the receptionist will be back in a minute, so you can either hold on or, you know, uh, maybe phone later. Or you could take a message. If you're permitted to do so, that is. Do you know, I, I'll take the risk, actually. I sent a letter first class to your senior practice manager on the 18th of this month, and... Am I going too quickly for you? Uh, no, no, I'm just about keeping up. Even considering the vagaries of the postal service, I had expected a reply by now. The name is Lewisham. Have you written that down? Uh, yes, in my best handwriting. My thanks. Good day. because she'd already tootled off to a training session and uh, you weren't here. It's not like you to be late. 11.15 and I'm not late. She left early. Mm. And I would have been here sooner, but I had to walk the last part of my journey. There was a little unpleasantness at the bus stop. Oh, why? What happened? Water under the bridge. Oh, oh <laughs> la. <laughs> so <Don't ask. laughs> Did you have a heavy night? No, it wasn't supposed to be. I went for a takeaway and bumped into some old mates from college who I hadn't seen in, like, forever. I had lots to catch up on. Mm, one drink led to another, then you ended up in a club uh, and a club. I really had to sleep. If you were in a fit stage, you'd have remembered that today you're booked in to work from home. You're free until this afternoon when you have a meeting with Julia. Uh, this afternoon I'll be crashed out in my bed, thank you very much. But this meeting's been scheduled for weeks. That's why I'm here, to ask Julia to postpone it. I tried calling her, but her mobile's, like, permanently off. Oh, give her a chance. She just got back from holiday. And she'll be in no mood for any nonsense from you. <laughs> nice to see there's still some gentlemen around. Do you need a hand with those? Oh, yeah, thank you very much. Mm. Buenos dias! Julia, how lovely to have you back. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Are you following me? Sorry, my dear. And don't pretend it wasn't you at the bus stop. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Earlier on, this young lady and myself had a bit of a game of bumps a daisy. <laughs> no lasting damage, I hope. Oh, Michelle! For you. Ooh, alcohol, just what I need. Where's your uniform, Michelle? Um, yeah, look, I can explain. Ah, I have an appointment with Dr Woodson, Barney Chalmers. Take a seat. She'll call you when she's ready. Uh, yours, I think. <laughs> Certainly not mine. <laughs> it's not my shade. Michelle, our meeting's really important. Please, Julia, I'm dying here. Well, I can't promise anything, but I want to check and double-check that everything's all right here. And if it is? I want to do the same at the mill. Then, and only then, I might consider rearranging my diary. Please, I want to see the contents of that bag. Oh. Yep. Well, you know the drill with burglary. Get a statement. You don't need me to hold your hand. Really? That bad? Get what you can from the neighbours. I'll get down to the hospital. Sorry! Thank you. Much appreciated. So, how have you been managing? Perfectly well. 
Perfectly. No, I meant uh, the surgery, you know, while I was away. Oh, no major hiccups. <laughs> um, a Miss Lewisham has been fussing about a letter that wasn't replied to. This is handwritten and addressed personally to you, which is why I think Ruth saved it until your return. Oh. Oh, well, it's probably a complaint or a begging letter or a sermon on the joys of faith healing. Oh. Is that Michelle? You OK, Barney? Still here. Dr Woodson kindly said I could put this up. What do you think? Does it get the message across? Yeah. I, Barney Chalmers, agree to have the operation that everyone tells me I should have. <laughs> it's going to take more than you and Dr Woodson to get me to do that. <laughs> Monday morning blues, is it? A bracing walk, that's what you need. Oh, no, I seriously couldn't face it. See, that's your generation talking, that is. You might have your texting and your MP3s and your Anton Dex, but what you haven't got, if you don't mind me saying, is an adventurous spirit. I'm adventurous. Oh. I'll try anything once. <laughs> How do you think I ended up in this state? <laughs> Here, it's my last one. I was just going on for some more. But take it. Leatherbridge and District Ramblers Association. It's got our calendar. All our roots are in it. I think you'll find it of interest. Barney, if God had wanted us to walk, he never would have gave us cars. Oh. <laughs> I would prefer it if you didn't encourage that man. Especially with so many female students coming in. Hey, Barney. Now he's one of the good guys. You wouldn't have thought so if you'd seen him at the bus stop this morning. Bumping into me accidentally on purpose. Vivian, it would have been an accident. Believe me. Poor bloke's only blind. A Miss Miranda Lewisham wrote to us about a week ago and I've just read her letter. Seems her father, Professor Bernard Lewisham, was one of Leatherbridge University's smartest cookies and he died back in January. Miss Lewisham has kindly sent us a cheque for £500. It's a little... Thank you to the practice for the care her father received during his last long illness. Isn't that nice? But there's a problem. Because I don't think that she realises that the campus surgery has changed hands and we're under new management. And none of us here had any dealings with her father. So it would be very wrong to accept this cheque unless she's been told and has a chance to change her mind. Not that I want her to, of course. So take the cheque back and turn on the charm. You're good at all that kind of stuff. Because I'm up to here with work, Michelle. I'm trying to catch up after my holiday. I need Vivian on the desk. And all the doctors are busy today. What, you want me to go? Just as a little favour. Not to me. To our patients. Come on, Michelle. Do this for me. I'll forget about our meeting. Sounds like a good deal to me. And from my letter, she sounds like a really sweet old dear. Hello? This is private property. How dare you trespass? We need to damn it, St. Phil's now. What, is this that burglary case you're on? Well, burglary's a possibility, but it's hard to know when the victim's not want to give him a statement. Well, he's in a bad way. She is. It beggars belief, it really does. I sent her a cheque, and your practice manager thought it appropriate to send you to see me. Uh, th what's wrong with me? Oh, no, you misunderstand me. My, my criticism was non ad hominem. Which translates as not levelled against you personally. Right. We never did Greek at my school. It's Latin. My point being that if you are indeed a nurse as you say you are, you surely should be nursing, not running errands. I'm not on duty today, actually. You came to see me in your free time. Then I must offer you tea. No, no, it's okay. I haven't got the time, really. It's lab sang Su Chong. You'll come to like it if you make the effort. Like a bad penny, I have returned. Uh, Mr. Chalmers. It's all right. I've got permission to leave these. About the misunderstanding earlier, I, I am sorry. Oh, there's no need to apologise. <laughs> it's me to blame. I've got two left feet. I wouldn't have reacted the way that I did if, um, if I'd known about your condition. You mean you didn't guess? Well, that's the best compliment you could have paid me. Thing is, I like to keep it a bit secret. Whatever for? Oh, to stop people fussing, you know. 
There's nothing like people trying to cheer you up to get you down. I know what you mean. Oh, are you all right, love? As soon as I get an earful of that, I give him one of these. <laughs> and say, no, everything's hunky-dory. That shuts the beggars up. You've read all of these? My father has. Had. Um, and written a few of them. Bernard Lewisham. Bernard Lewisham. But landscape as metaphor in 19th century fiction. He had a passion for nature, which he instilled in me. I, in turn, attempted to instill it in my pupils. I was a school teacher, you know. You don't say. My school was in Kent, one of the best. Girls had to be very bright to go there. <sighs> had to be brave to go to mine. I bet yours was a boarding school, wasn't it? Did you have to live there? With all the kids in the school? I did, for 20 years. And I would have happily lived there for another 20. But it was not to be. Daddy was taken ill. You came back to Lethbridge to nurse him? Well, there's nobody else. He needed constant care. It was a severe stroke. That must have been really tough. It was. But he always showed such remarkable fortitude. No, I meant it must have been tough for you. Having to give up your career and everything. <laughs> On the contrary, it was... It was a privilege to do what I could for him. If you can't understand that, my girl, perhaps you're in the wrong profession. No, I... I do understand. Really, I, I do. You've nursed a dying father? No. My... Caris, I've spoken to, and I, I've met a lot. They say that there's something even harder than the nursing. It's afterwards. When they're not needed anymore, and they realise they've got this gaping hole in their life, I'm at a loose end. Is that what you think? Well, you're bound to be until you get your life back on track, get back to work, wake up in the mornings feeling like you've got something to do with your day. You think I don't? Follow me, please. Oh, hang on a minute. Do you know what happened yet? Yeah, we're getting there. Just give me a minute. So you talk to both neighbours. Right. And you think I spent my days twiddling my thumbs when I have all of this to deal with? My father's papers. As you can see, he was a little disorganised. It's left to me to sift through every one of these pages. And you think there might be something interesting in here? No, I said he was disorganised, not stupid. It was a source of great solace to him in his last years that his life's work had been completed. Everything he'd wanted to see published had been published. So what's all this? First draft of his second book. Notes for his Cambridge lectures on Keats. Shottings he made at a conference in Vienna. His undergraduate notes. Michaelmas, 1952. Razor blades, pipe cleaners, reading. This is a shopping list? You keep your fingers to yourself. I, I'm endeavouring to bring some order here. I have to organise, collate, index, file. Why? Well, somebody has to. Why? You wouldn't understand. Try me. And don't say it's what he would have wanted, because you already said he'd published everything he wanted to publish. All this, this is just... leftovers. 